Hello everyone, I'm Tutu3Omar and welcome to the first episode of Diamond World. Before I start, I want to thank you guys for joining me and remember to follow the channel on your favorite podcast app and YouTube. I'm on Twitter and Instagram at Kingdom3Omar. I want to jump straight into uh, video game news and I want to talk about Cyberpunk 2077. Now, I actually just beat my first uh, playthrough and that took me 66 hours to complete um and i just went head deep into it i went non-stop playing it i didn't play any other game except for cyberpunk and i was absolutely addicted it, and I'll, I'll talk about the the critiques i had very much there was points when i was playing and i just hated the game so with cyberpunk being released last week the game has positively lived up to the hype the game accomplishes its rpg way of life so much at so much that it depends on how you play the game now it's no gta but it thrives on not being a single player crime action this makes this game makes you feel as if you're in the future playing blade runner so i want to talk about how great the story is and how great you are playing as v the main character you're practically playing yourself i mean the guy um not going into any spoilers he doesn't really have much history to go off of you start off and that's about it you go on and you do whatever you want with me you know you know you're practically living his life so but my huge critiques on the game is that it's just filled with bugs it's not a complete game yeah you could fix it with patches but why the hell are you releasing a game with bugs it doesn't make any sense to me you're gonna tell me that you can't run it on ps4 you can't run it on xbox one when it was advertised on those and i'm super happy with what sony did i mean they took it off their marketplace because it, it was just a disaster of the game and you know i saw this from a mile away cd project red when they delayed the first time i was like okay you know um i trust them they're gonna come out and you know the next the next deadline they're gonna meet it and we're gonna get a good game but then they missed that one so it was supposed to release in September. Now it goes into, or yeah, it's supposed to go into September. It gets really delayed until November when the PS5 and Xbox Series X and S were going to come out. Now you're going to tell me that you couldn't figure out how to get the game to play it on the PS4 and the Xbox One. You've been trying to make this game for over seven years, right? Or, or seven or over, more, right? And you can't figure out how to play it on the regular systems. So yeah, we go from it being on a September release date, right? That's even before the PS5 and Xbox One. So you, you have a whole month of playing it on a trashy ass device on the Xbox One and PS4. And now I'm only I'm, t- I'm only talking about the console uh, people right now. But don't get me started with the PC on what's going on there. But we have that, right? And then we go into November, the PS5 xbox series s s and x or however you want to say it um cyberpunk is basically marketing the thing as if it's a next generation game you know like oh it's practically a release you know a first release game for the next generation um i don't know how that's true we don't get any footage of regular uh basic ps4 xbox one games only ps4 pro xbox one uh x so by the time the second delay was going i knew that there was gonna be huge huge um problems with the game just because how how do you not meet your second deadline it doesn't make any sense to me and you're gonna move it all the way back to december there, there's just something fishy about that that i saw so i pop it in right i pop in cyberpunk as soon as i get it i'm super excited super hyped up um i put the game in whatever i'm putting it on my ps5 so i got a ps5 I got an Xbox Series S, so no matter what, I was I would have played it. I play it. I'm playing it. It's absolutely beautiful. Not the most beautiful game on the PS5, to be sure. That's probably Astrobot, Demon Souls, uh, and Spider Man on 60 FPS with ray tracing on. But it, it you know it looks pretty good. Now here's the problem. You have so many glitches in that game. That it's almost hard to enjoy it while you're playing it. Now, does that mean that that make me stop? No. I mean, there was crashes. I had to report bugs. 
bug <laughs> bug is i have to report bugs um basically the whole nine yards with the game and you know to this day i still give it an 8 out of 10 you know it's not a 10 out of 10 9 out of 10 for me um just because of all the bugs and all the crashes on all it does wrong but the story is great if you guys are really interested in this game i i can't recommend it but coming into february when the game gets re-released as a ps5 or xbox uh series x i highly recommend you guys uh buy this cop it up um and play this game it's not a for me it's not a necessity to play it on your ps5 or xbox series x just because it doesn't do it justice you know uh there was a problem with uh cd project red and this is a huge ambitious game you know this is a, a ambitious game that didn't live up to that ambition there's too much it's like like going back to rocks uh rockstar you know gta when gta 5 came out it came out in in the ps5 last sorry not ps5 the ps3's last month the xbox um 360's last month and the, and the idea was that the ssd couldn't even figure out how to play right you had so many things popping uh on your screen you had the cars the ai's to the point that the rock star actually had to tone it down for those consoles and then the ps4 and xbox uh one come out and then you're here seeing all you know you're seeing the true gta 5 on what it was right or what it was supposed to be and that's what cd project Red did you know i put a pause on that because there this game was for pc I mean, you look at it, and it's just a PC game. The P it you can't play it at a a 1080. You know, you're gonna it's gonna look not that great. Um, we've seen what it did with the PS4. It's, it's practically killing it, to be honest. Like you can't even touch that shit. And the PS5 and Xbox uh, Series X don't do it quite justice. Right now, it's it's a PC game. Um, Especially the sh the aiming on this game is so hard to aim on a fucking controller. It makes absolutely no sense, you know. Um, but with that, I want to talk about the PC, you know, uh, with this game. Um, unless you have a high fucking uh, a PC, you know, a great PC that can run a, a fucking ultra HD fucking ray tracing motherfucker on and everything on, you know, a high end motherfucker. You're just not gonna have a a Cyberpunk 27 type of lifestyle, you know. The ray tracing in this game is is nothing to be you know clamored by. It's nothing next gen. This the ray tracing just uh paste it on, you know. There's small ray tracing in the game, but for the most part, lamps that are in uh near apartments such as. V's apartment is literally pasted on, you know, there's not much to it. You could totally tone down, uh, tone down, sorry, you could tone down your, um, your settings, you turn off ray tracing, and it'll still kind of look like there's ray tracing there. So you could show that ray tracing in your NVIDIA card is not really worth, you know, that $2,000 that you wasted to play Cyberpunk. So really, it really doesn't do it quite justice. Um, so that's a problem with that too. The AI is absolutely broken. I mean, there's no car chases, and this is no spoilers at all. But there's no car chases in this game. You could literally kill a police officer right in front of uh, another free police officer, have them shoot at you, get in the police cruiser or however you want to say it, the car. Probably uh, drive for about ten seconds, and your wa your wanted um rating will go down automatically there's just almost as if there was no effort in the game and that's the thing about the delay right i felt that they were going to take things out because they they weren't meeting the demand of the delay you know they weren't getting there and you know they took a lot of stuff out and by a lot i mean a lot with the car chases because you don't feel in depth it doesn't feel like you're a mercenary out there being a badass if, if you can't run from cops you know and also, you know, with the high-end PC, um, you know, if you have a potato as a PC, you're, I mean, first of all, you're definitely not going to be playing Cyberpunk, right? 
but also if I could I could imagine if I'm playing this on a PS5 right and my game's crashing right you know like it, it just crashes like every 30 minutes uh, the bugs are absolutely horrible I can only imagine what it is on PC you know because we're looking at it and the PS5 and Xbox Series X are practically they're not high end PCs, but they're they're probably in the middle ground, you know. They're, they're consoles on fucking steroids. That's what these guys are. And if you're just having an average PC, it's probably gonna run the same as the PS5, you know. And the thing about the a PC, right? I've been hearing stories that you can't even get a a consistent 60 FPS in the ga- in the fucking game, you know. And you look at PS5, you know, that's that thing's in a pretty consistent 60 FPS, but you know, that's just it's just unacceptable by CD Projekt Red. You know, um, I love the game for what it was. I, I truly did. Uh, you know, I don't get, I don't just put um, 40 hours plus into a game if I don't love it, you know. I mean, I played uh, Spider-Man for um, 67 hours. That's probably one of my favorite games, you know. I played uh, Red Dead Redemption 2 for 72 hours, and that's... Um, you know my favorite game of all time so i don't just put in the time you know if you know i if i didn't care about this game i probably would have just played 20 hours beat the game that's it because of how sucky the game was right but it's not you know the side missions are great you know the lore of the story you know johnny silverhand is one of the best characters you know it's just a great time you know seeing v continue continue to continue to grow in night city so you know that's my review on the game um if you guys are trying to get it for christmas um you don't have to it's not a must play you know I, i've seen a lot of people say it's a next gen game you know people getting mad at ps4 players getting on a site you know getting cyberpunk putting on the ps4 and blaming cd project red but you know the game's not next gen the game is just not next gen. The AI is definitely not next gen. The ray tracing is definitely not next gen. You know, it's just an ambitious game. Um, now the tree or you know your RPG base, it does it justice. You know, the RPG is kind of fun. Um, the way you talk to certain characters is great. The dialogue, this is very dialogue heavy game. So if you're going into it thinking it's GTA, it's not. Definitely not. It's not just straight down the middle uh crime action you're you're gonna have to do more especially if you want a good ending no spoilers here but if you want a good ending you're gonna have to do side jobs and and just have fun with them wrapping that up let's go into the the sports news all right guys so the first thing i have right here on on sports talk or that's what i'm gonna talk sports talk just so i could kind of uh you know differentiate it from uh, me talking about video games but the first thing i got are the fucking Clippers and their fucking retarded asses. You know, the Clippers signed Paul George to a max contract for five years worth $225 million. <laughs> this is horrible. Absolutely atrocious. How can a franchise who does not trust a player to go out there and play <laughs> to give uh, a huge contract you know, to that player, that means he's gonna go out there and play the game at a high caliber level every single day of the week. But you know what? I'm here talking about the Clippers, but you know what? I gotta give props to Paul George because I'm calling highway robbery on this. Call 911. Call your, your local neighborhood watch because this is literally the biggest robbery that I've seen in quite a while. This is an absurd contract and don't get me wrong paul george is a good player but not worth that amount but you want to know the reason for this it's because of the long-term contract that ad and lebron just got to stay in the purple and gold in the same city in the same locker room but just playing for the lakers the big brothers the fact uh, the facts are there you know Kawhi has continued to manipulate the clippers into foolish decisions. The first one was signing him after giving his trade demand for Paul George. And now it's by hoping to keep him after showing that you will sign his buddy. The Clippers should know that Kawhi doesn't trust anyone. 
and he's more likely to run away with a big cash than to just say, hey, we got ourselves a good team here. The Clippers are continuing to jump the gun on situations that present themselves. Just because a player states he wants to retire in your team doesn't mean it's a good idea. I'm super happy for Paul George, so don't get me wrong, but this is irresponsible by the Clippers, by Jerry West, and by Baldwin. You know, um, this is just, just by how I spoke right now, uh, just what I stated, it's absolutely, you could hear the disgust in my voice as well as, well as the laughter that came out. It's just, it doesn't make any sense to me, you know. Um, you sign Paul George, right? The guy that no one likes on your team, right? And you could be saying, oh, okay, you know, players could change. But that's it. Change doesn't come in just two fucking months, you know. we There's only been, what, they just won the, uh, the Lakers just won the championship, right? The Clippers lost in, what was it, um... October, September, October, they lost somewhere around that, right? So they stopped playing somewhere around then. Now it's December. That's about, I want to say, I'll, I'll give it to him. I'll, I'll, I'll say three months, right? He, so he's had three months to change, right? Now, that doesn't make any sense to me. How can you change in just three months? It doesn't make abs, makes no sense. You want to know why they call it a New Year's resolution? It's because you don't just change things in one month. You got to keep doing it you gotta keep continuing it's kind of like an addiction right you gotta keep if you want to be a happy person you gotta be happier you gotta be happy for the first six months and then show yourself that you're still happy in the next six months you know change doesn't just happen you know it's not a it's not with a finger where i says okay i wake up the next day now i'm now i'm a good person right yeah you could i guess you could wake up and say hey i'm a piece of shit dude but that's like more like I don't know depression or anything like that, right? It just comes quick. Real change comes when, when you continually consist upon it. You know, you don't just say, "Hey, um, I'm tired of all the buffoonery I did." You know, um, it's time to kind of lay my eggs and just uh, be happy and be and you know end up a, staying a clipper, right? That's not the case, right? So. And, and you know what? I'm gonna I'm put it. I'm gonna go baseball talk on this, right? So the Clippers trade and get Paul George, right? Yeah, he's on a what was it? A two year contract, a one year? I don't know, how, right? I don't know how many years he he they had got him for. But let's say you know with the Dodgers, right? The Dodgers trade for Mookie Betts, right? You know they they win the World Series. Besides them winning the World Series, let's go back to to when they just traded for Mookie, right? They had just traded for Mookie, right? And everything was going of like, oh, dude, you know, they're going to win the World Series, right? Uh, You know, Mookie Bess is not just a high caliber player. You know, he's not just a five tool player. He's one of the nicest people on, you know, in this world. And he's a leader, a captain, you know? He's a guy that's, he's the last missing puzzle, you know? Just like Kershaw is to the to the to the pitching staff, you know, the captain of the team, right? Doesn't matter if he if he does great that day or not, you know. He's still the captain of the of the pitching staff, you know. Just like Kenley Jensen. You know, it doesn't matter if he sucks that day or not. He's the captain in the bullpen. You know, who did the Dodgers have as the captain on the team? Justin Turner? Right? Justin Turner. But Justin Turner he it was his last year, right? J- they had him for uh J- JT they they had JT Doing great for what the last five years, and where have where have they gotten to the World Series but not won it? So they still need a piece. They still needed one more piece, and they went ahead and they got Mookie, right? So you land Mookie, you get a captain on the team. So now we're going into the, into the regular season, and we're sh- and we're seeing now on how Mookie, Betts, and J- JT can command the team, right? They're winning games. They f- do. They could literally be the one of the greatest teams of all time, right? They. You know, next to the Yankees of the 1950s, right? And the Yankees of the 2000s, and and the um the Dodgers of the 1955. You know, they could be as great as the 1955 Dodgers. You know, they're not they're not that caliber. You know, but 
you know, they went, what is it, 42 and 17, something like that, right? So they don't even, they don't even lose 20 games. They don't even close to lose 20 games, but because they have captain in JT, a captain in Kershaw, and a captain in Mookie Betts, they get that. What did the Clippers get in Kawhi and Paul George? Please tell me. I'm I'm waiting. Literally, put it down in the comments. Put it down in the feedback. Wherever the hell you you know Instagram, Twitter, DM me. Who the fuck did the Clippers get in Kawhi and Paul George? What a great player. You know, a great elite. You know, player, a two way player in in Kawhi that can play that that great of defense because now he's commanding the ball in offense. Or a Paul George, when you don't even know who you're going to get that day. The inconsistent uh, dude that he is, you know. Um, I don't know who they got. You know, you look at uh, what the Lakers got. They got LeBron, they got AD, two leaders, right? AD is becoming to a, a, has become into a leadership role, just like LeBron has. You know, you look at what um, the Dallas Mavericks have, you know, in Luka Doncic. I mean, he's one of my favorite players to watch. Um he's literally showing that he's one of the younger players that can lead a team. You know, he's wherever he goes, the Mavericks go. However the Mavericks want to play, he wants to play, you know, they'll play to his style, but that's not what he wants, you know. He wants everyone to be involved. And you know, what did you get in Kawhi and Paul George? I mean, you didn't get shit. You just didn't get shit. What was the point of giving up practically your whole franchise for Paul George, you know? Your whole future for Paul George. And you know what? I could blame I could blame Kawhi for all this, right? I could blame him for all this. But why do, but why should I? You know, why should I? The guy I should you know, it if you're in a relationship or whatever, it this doesn't have anything to do. But you always if it's a franchise, you always want to blame the fucker who got manipulated. You know, you know, companies like Microsoft, Apple, they didn't get manipulated. You want, and the reason they're big is because they didn't. You know, those are corporations that went big because they they landed on their gut. And this wasn't a gut move. You know, Kawhi Leonard practically blackmailed the Clippers, and the Clippers said, "Fuck it." You know, let me just get. I you know, I don't care what the hell I have to do to get Kawhi. I'm gonna do it. And it's just, and now you got, now you actually have to keep Paul George. Think about that. Now you actually have to keep Paul George. And it doesn't make any sense to me, you know. It it, it does make sense to the point where it's like you traded away everything to get Paul George, right? You get, and so now you're trying to keep him for all the draft picks that you wasted, for all the players that you wasted. For Alex, Gillius Alexander, dude, Shea Gillius and. Oh my God! Did they lost him to Paul George, dude? He's he's the half the player Paul George is right now, and he's not even. <laughs> How old is he? How old is he? The guy's still young, <laughs> you know. So it's like it, it it just the Clippers to me are are just dead in the water. Water, you know. They got Serge Ibaka, but doesn't mean shit. Doesn't mean absolute shit. They're they. They're just not in the Laker level. They're not. Hell, I could even say they're not in the Phoenix Suns level. The Phoenix Suns have no what the fuck they want to do other than the Clippers. You know, who the fuck is Ty Lue too? You know, I, I know I'm ranting about the, the Clippers. But that's because I actually want them to be good, you know. I want every year to be like, I want every year to be like the Lakers and Clippers. You know, the Celtics, you know, those teams. I want that to be the NBA, you know. I want them to be good, you know, because they suck, you know, who, who cares about the Clippers? No one, you know, you could, you could be like, okay, I care about the Clippers because they got Kawhi and Paul George. But after that, that shit that they did, you know, after becoming the bad guys for over a year and then sh- wetting the bed in the playoffs, you know, it's kind of like, why the fuck do I want to watch this team? Why the fuck do I care to see them lose? They're already going to fucking lose because they, because they suck, you know? All right, guys. So in our final news of... Uh, sports talk you know i actually got something good <laughs> some uh, i'm done with the rant i'm going to go into something positive and something i'm happy about and that's lance lynn man so the white Sox, uh land lance lynn so lance lynn to the white Sox. oh, oh my god 
this is such a big uh, get for the White Sox. I just can't, I can't begin to talk about it. This is how you upgrade a team, man. <laughs> this is how you upgrade a team, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, they went from becoming, uh, they went from being a couple of years early to jumping in to the postseason party in 2020. And now you look at the rotation. Giolito had a tremendous year with a 3.48 ERA. Um, that is Keiko, who has found his uh, stride back with the White Sox. Dylan Cease, who continues to have nasty potential coming off his second season. And now you add Lance Lynn. Lance Lynn, the forgotten monster from the Rangers. My Christ. Man, Lynn had. Uh, 89 strikeouts, 89, and an ERA of 3.38, and that's with only 84 innings of work. The the Sox have its pitching staff that can give protection to the to the offense that they had with Jose Abreu, um, uh, Lewis Robert. The only downfall that the that the White Sox have is right now is actually uh Tony Russo. You know, the manager of the team. Um, you know, will Tony uh, be able... To, I don't know why I said Tony. <laughs> like, you know, but will he be able to manage a team in the modern era? Is still unanswered as of right now. It's a team I expect to compete with the Twins for the AL Central in 2021. Now... You know, I know I just ran it about the Clippers, but this is how you do it. You know, the White Sox, this is how you do it. You don't just waste things away. You go out there and you get the best pitcher out there. And that was Lance Lynn. My God, is that going to be a nasty pitching staff? You know, if 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 Giolito and Keiko can continue the way they played last season, which wasn't all that great, you know, thinking about it now. But if they could have that, you know, in the pitching rotation and make the playoffs with that, right? So you're going to have, and that's with Cease, right? That's not with Cease. I'm not even talking about Cease quite yet and whoever else they have, you know, lined up. But, you know, I think about that, right? And yeah, it'll be tough to play against, you know, the Rays, but with that offense, dude, with that offense, you could literally play anyone, you know, that's what I'm saying. Lance Lynn really does, the pitching staff really does give um, his best defense, you know, the pitching staff is his best defense, you know, with the offense doing his thing, um, you know, getting in those run support for their pitcher, they did great at it, you know, you know, you, you think about it, they, they honestly could have made it to probably the second round, I mean, not the second round, they could have gotten to the, um, to the pennant, you know, they could have came close to the pennant and tried to chase for the pennant, you know, in the championship series against the the Rays, you know, because they were one game, right? They they win game one against the A's, and they lose the next two, right? So they come close. They they, they came really close in that game three, man. It was one of the funner games, uh, of uh, well, what do you want to like that hybrid March Madness for baseball thing? But you know, they came close. So you know, they went from being a piece away to now having that piece. And now they're they're now a couple pieces away from just probably winning the World Series. So they got the pieces they have to chase after the pennant. But I don't know if it's good enough to win the World Series. But, you know, but you have enough, right? So you, the Rays will be a tough task with Glass now coming back and, you know, having a dumpster fire of a season in the postseason with only, what, three pitches? So he only has three pitches. He's probably going to get the fourth one next season. That'll put them over the top for a glass now. Uh, the Rays are pro- the Blake's. Uh, the Rays shouldn't trade for Blake. Uh, trade Blake's now, but they could. You know, Blake's now has been on the trade block for uh, our trade talk for a while. Um, you know, with the fiasco that happened in the World Series, he's not happy about it. Also, the Rays usually trade players by this time. Um. But with Charlie Morton now, I don't see how Blake Snell leaves the Rays. I hope he does because he's not going to win a World Series in the fucking Rays uniform. He's just not. Blake Snell got to get the fuck out. Um, but that's besides the point. So, you know, so, and then you look at the Yankees, right? 
you know, I've been seeing so much shit, right? So much hype about Garrett Cole. And, you know, I, I like Garrett Cole. You know, I... I thought the Yankees were going to win, or were going to, not win, but make the World Series. I thought it was going to be the Yankees and Dodgers, you know. Um, but it didn't happen, you know. And with, um, you know, Garrett Cole kind of not living up to that hype in the postseason. You know, he get his, he, what, he lost the game? Did he lose the game? Well, he didn't, I don't know. But they still lost that game, right, he he started on. They didn't make the play, they didn't continue on to the to the championship series they lost to the Rays you know ton, uh, my Masahiro Tanaka one of my favorite pitchers to watch um, especially in the postseason didn't go didn't go out there and perform and that's like I said you know when they and I I know uh, this is my first episode but even before when I did uh, Mookie Best Breakdown on YouTube I said that Derek Cole and Tanaka were not going to be the end all be all for the Yankees you know um, they they still needed more pieces with Luis Severino gone. I was, when I first heard Luis Severino was out of Tommy John, I I didn't I didn't expect him to win the World Series, but I, I expected him to have a shot to play the Dodgers. Um, but you know Luis Severino is definitely the the pillar of that team, so you're gonna have to go through Luis Severino, Garrett Cole, Tanaka probably. Um, so that's kind of a hard thing to do. But I really do think the White Sox can be there. You know, the, the Indians are another team, right? Um, they're just they're about to trade away uh Francisco Lindor for I don't know who, right? You don't know who who the hell the the Indians are gonna get, but I'm pretty sure whoever they get are gonna be capable of at least hitting the ball, right? That's all you need. I know Lindor had a lot of defense. You know, Lindor is one of my favorite player or is my favorite player, but still, his defense was like. It, it, his defense wasn't really needed at times, you know, because of the pitching, you know, Shane Bieber, um, you know, who, who the hell needs, why would you need a defense, you know, uh, or a position players, a golden glovers when Shane Bieber, when Shane Bieber's pitching, man, the guys that strike out everyone. So there's no need to have a gold glover there for, to be honest, for, for the Indians, but you need the offense really. Um, and I know I'm saying that even though, you know, go you know, the good defense matters. Check him out, Lance Lynn. He's going to be great for the White Sox. He's going to be riding. Do the White Sox still have pants stripes? I think they still do. Um, But super happy about that White Sox get. And that's why I'm, I'm going to have to leave it at that. You know, thank you guys for joining me. Remember to follow the podcast um, on all your favorite podcast apps. It's on Apple podcast stitcher and also subscribe to my youtube channel as well as follow me on instagram and twitter at king23mr thank you guys for joining me and peace out